Emil Nolde was a German Expressionist painter. He was born in 1867 near the border of Denmark and Germany and studied and worked all across Europe but finally landed back home in Germany. In 1905, Nolde exhibited in the Berlin Secession. He was invited to be a member of Die Brücke, a group of German Expressionist painters. The group focused on art that reached back to pre-academic forms such as primitive modes of painting. They searched for authentic emotion, often using sexuality, which led to an expressive style shown with brighter colors and harsher lines. It's kept simple, almost as if a kindergartner created it. Die Brücke is typically seen as the fountainhead of German Expressionism, being one of the first groups that pushed German modern art onto the international avant-garde scene. They developed modern examples of expressive colorists like Van Gogh, Munch, and Matisse, and by using these sharp, clashing colors, they can evoke a particular emotion. Die Brücke's work is extremely recognizable simply based on its content and the technique used in the paintings. It is no mystery as to why they invited Emil Nolde to their group and why he spearheaded the movement with his works and brought German Expressionism so far into the modern world. In the years 1911 and 1912, Emil Nolde executed a large number of sketches in the Berlin Museum for Volkerkunde as preparatory studies for his so-called ethnographic still lifes. His decision to visit the Berlin Ethnographic Museum was very common in contemporary avant-garde practice. Maskenstilleiben 3, or Mask Still 3, the objects are hung similar to a display case. The painting is made up of multiple sketches from different parts of the museum, as well as some imaginary masks. Nolde sketched the head of a Yuruna Indian in a crayon drawing from the Amazon Indian objects. There is also a mask from a pencil drawing of a canoe head from the Solomon Islands from the South Seas section of the museum. The painting with the masks from other cultures and many different express expressions tied with the shocking colors and stark contrast leaves the viewer with a haunting feeling. Masks currently resides in the Nel Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City, Missouri. After calling the museum, being transferred and put on hold a few times, I was finally able to have the piece's provenance emailed to me. Originally, Nolde sold the work to Karl Osthaus in 1911 for the museum Folkwang, which is now in Essen, Germany. It was then confiscated by the German National, National Socialist government and taken to the Schloss Niederschonhausen in Berlin in 1937. Joseph Goebbels was the head of the Nazi ministry of public enlightenment and propaganda and authorized the confiscation of degenerate works of art from the German public museums. The ministry targeted mostly avant-garde modernist works. Those works deemed to have international value were transferred to the Schloss Niederschonhausen to await sale. Masks arrived there in 1938 and was consigned by the Nazi government to Karl Buchholz in 1941, where he consigned it to Buchholz Gallery in New York. The gallery was then renamed Kurt Valentin Gallery, who sold it to the Friends of Art in 1954, a board of donors for the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City. It has stayed there ever since. The issue with this, however, is that now the Nelson Atkins Museum doesn't have any legal hold of the artwork. Because of the time period, and because the Nazis legalized all of their art theft, at the time this sale would have been recognized, but now we know that the Nazis consigned it and still technically owned it until the Friends of Art purchased it in New York, the original museum, Folkwang, has rightful claim to it. The use of the word consigned proves this, and I believe if the museum Folkwang wanted it back, they would have a very strong case. Then of course, things become even more complicated. Nolde's relationship with the Nazi regime has started many difficult conversations and debates within the last few years. For decades, those who enjoyed Nolde's artwork pictured him as one of the degenerate artists 
who were prohibited by, to paint by the Nazi regime. This is true, but only because of Nolde's style, not his personal beliefs. He had strived to become the central artist of the Third Reich, claiming his art as true, German, and anti-Semitic. So, this brings a question to rise, should we care about what happens to Nolde's work because of his personal beliefs? Daniel Richter, an esteemed modern German painter, has an interesting opinion on this subject. The fascinating question about the reception of Nolde is more like, why did the Germans or the rest of the world believe, had to believe that he was not a Nazi? It was known that he was a Nazi. Karl Hofer, the first president of the University of Kunst in Berlin, called him Nazi Emil and despised him because of his opportunism. So it, it could have been a known fact, but it never was. Why? Because you could say the German elites and the arts and the people, like, he was representing what the Germans wanted. He was a Nazi member, he was an opportunist, but he was also betrayed. So he had, you know, like he aimed high, but then Hitler was a disappointment. Hitler personally said, no, stop with all that Jewish Bolshevistic Negro painting, it's over, done, you know? So you could say that was a, a justification, an excuse, and it was something that had to do with the collective minds of the Germans in the 40s and 50s. Because now they could present somebody who was like them. He makes the beautiful flower paintings, he, makes the, he is an artist, he makes the crazy religious painting. They are extremely German, they are extremely easy to consume. He is excused, so he is a, he's the, you could say he's the prototype of a German. He tried and he got betrayed like all the Germans. They all From this we can tell that Nolde's work had a huge impact on the Germans and represented their story extremely well. He represented what they wanted from an artist, and it was easy for them to ignore the fact that he was a member of the Nazi party. At this time period, as Richter says, almost all of the Germans were as well, or they tried to go along with it. Because of Nolde's significant history, with not only his art, but also his political beliefs, it's fair to say that his work belongs in Germany. They can better understand its history, not only the artist, but also what his expressionism did for the movement itself in Germany.